Good morning, folks. We've got a space weather watch coming up here, magnetic fields explaining a broken rule of the universe, and a very watery exoplanet. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Bright active region departing on the north has left Earth-facing position and now begins to get more active. Small CME released yesterday afternoon far away from Earth, and this morning we're seeing continued small-scale solar flaring, last one happening now, and we'll have to analyze that one today. Solar wind continues to calm. This will allow any intensified streams to really stick out in the telemetry. You'll recall we've got a coronal hole stream on the way, and it's looking like an impact this weekend is just about certain. But let's step back. Compare the bright departing active region top right with the large scale fields visible over the left side on the south. Well, let's see what's back there using Stereo A positioned a few months behind Earth's orbit. Zero heliographic longitude faces Earth, so let's spin the wheel and find a bright active region returning to the disk, trailed by that same large coronal hole we saw as well. Eyes open for their return. Now let's go to the Whirlpool Galaxy, M51. We've seen the different wavelength views in the past episodes, but today we're focused on its ULX. You'll remember it was part of another story just a few days ago, but here, Chandra has shown it violates the Eddington limit, and their only explanation for this violation is that powerful magnetic fields of the star are scattering material and allowing it to overconsume. Can't really argue with their field hypothesis there. Up next, we're looking at a watery exoplanet. Researchers say they are shocked at just how much water must be there, and what intrigues me further is the sodium line being so darn high. One can't help but wonder if there are any seven outer orbit electron elements in there that would allow there to be salt water. Let's go to citizen science projects of the millisecond pulsar identification variety. They have found two previously unknown pulsars, and one of them has no radio signature the first ever millisecond pulsar visible only in gamma wavelengths. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, yesterday's top news overshadowed this, but I wanted to remind you that the conference videos are being posted to the site as I finish them. Dr. D'Amico's Space Weather Health Talk is the latest, and even went into some of the Schumann resonance stuff that we have long hoped to have time to investigate ourselves. We've got the rest of the world's wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.